The NFL is full of shit. Oh, man. These guys are hypocrites. In fact, hypocrites, your basic hypocrite looks at the NFL and Roger Goodell and they go, God damn, they some hypocrites. I mean, I'm a hypocrite, but Roger Goodell is the king of hypocrisy. Anyone out there who believes that the NFL would have leveled the second punishment to Ray Rice if it were not for the clamoring and bitching and moaning of the populace, please step in front of a train immediately. You are not capable of, of handling this discussion because you think the NFL gives a shit about Janae Rice. How could you say that they did? Why would you believe that they did? In fact, I'm going to prove something to you. Not only does the NFL not give a shit about Janae Rice, the women's movement, the feminists, all the people out there asking for Ray Rice's head on a fucking platter, they don't care about Janae Rice either. Not a bit. Not one iota. Not one smidgen. They care about their own agendas. NFL cares about making money. And the people that support or so-called support or wanted to help Janae Rice, they only care about furthering their causes for their women's activist groups. If not, how do you explain taking food off the table of the woman you say you're trying to help? It would have been different if she left Ray Rice. It would have been different if she picked up and left town. It would have been different if she filed a report. It would be different if she was suing. It would be different if she never would have married him. It would have been a lot different. But see, you don't care about the woman that you say is the victim. Now you're the victim. The victim of what? How did Ray Rice hurt you? He didn't. But no, that's not good enough. It's not good enough that you took two games and then you took a whole half a season from the man. Now you want to take his whole career. Because you got nothing better to do. As if this is going to stop somebody from doing something stupid. It won't. As if anybody out there who abuses anyone is going to not do it because of Ray Rice. Like you just did something. You did nothing. You did nothing but further infuriate people to say, fuck your organization. Your organization is dog shit. That's what I believe. And you know what? You know what? I took a lot of heat for supporting Ray Rice, but I'm going to continue to do it. You know why? Because I believe, unlike some people, I believe Ray Rice was railroaded. Ray Rice was, Ray Rice was railroaded. The RR, the RR. And these people coming out, BuzzFeed and these other fucks, they make some, they printed an article that I read, and BuzzFeed said that uh, Ray Rice was over the hill, Ray Rice couldn't play, and no one's going to pick him up because he's not a good player and he didn't have a good year in 2013. You know what? BuzzFeed, you don't know anything about sports. Ray Rice is a very capable player. He did not have a great year. And fuck, fuck it. He had a bad year 2013. But you know what? He's still loved by the Ravens fans. I, Washingtonian, I'm a Washington Redskins fan, unfortunately. Pause for a moment to pay our respects for the death of RG3 on the Redskins team. He will, He's gone. Anyway, so I'm a Redskins fan. I was born in D.C. General Hospital, D.C. bred, grew up in Prince George's County um, and, and now Charles County. But I made the drive all the way to Baltimore to see the Super Bowl in 2012. And you know what? They love Ray Rice. I saw a lot of Ray Rice jerseys. Yeah. A lot of people supported Ray Rice in Baltimore. In fact, Harborough in the gang or the Ray Rice well, the Ravens' power structure would have never got rid of Ray Rice to begin with if it weren't for the pressure from the league. He's that well-liked. So take your Ray Rice is too old to play at 29 years old and shove it up your ass. He can still play football. If he'll be given the opportunity to play, that's a whole different thing because you know what? Politics. Fucking politics 
is the problem. Another thing, I took heat about, and I'm going to double down and say it again. See, I'm not a bandwagon jumping son of a bitch. I believe this from the beginning. If Ray Rice was an abusive husband, there'd have been a lot more cases of him abusing Janae than just this one time. Oh, come on, people. Come the fuck on. Give me the love. Give me the love. I need the love. We got to tell the truth, man. Come on. They have a volatile relationship. They had a situation in their relationship. He hit her. They spit on each other. They they got some shit going on with them. That's none of my business. Janae Rice was like, please mind your business. Please mind your business. Please let us live. They're like, no, Janae, we're here to help you. You don't know what's good for you. We're going to teach you. We're going to show you. Don't listen to her. She doesn't know it. Please lift the piano off my foot. No, Janae. Pianos are good for your feet. You just sit there and you just take the pain, sister. Bite down on something. Like a football helmet. Because you need to take that pain, girlfriend, and you'll come out the other side of this better. Better. Yes, the, your wallet will be lighter. You may have lose your home, but you'll be better off because you don't need a man. Any, can I come over and handle things for you? Bunch of lesbians telling Janae Rice she don't need a man because they hate men. They hate us. They hate us. They detest us. They trying to. They want to rid Janae of the virus, which is a man in her life. And take money off her table. Take food off her fucking table. So anyway, they're going to go on the Today Show Monday and Tuesday. And Janae Rice gets to tell her side of the story. And I hope she eviscerates these fucking feminist trolling bastards who want to make a movement using her name. Who want to further their cause using her name. Who want to gain mileage and yardage Using her name. Ray Rice was never the devil. They wanted to make him the devil. It's funny how they do that to the brothers, man. They made the brothers the devil. He's a demon. His eyes glowed. He breathed fire. He made a grunting sound. Oh, my God. He's so scary. Son of a bitch. He's so scary, this Ray Rice. Friend, be very afraid. The black man is coming to get you. That's what it's really about. Easy scapegoat. You know how many men in the NFL have domestic violence issues that <laughs> fuck you know how many men you know what almost as many NFL players have domestic violence char violence charges and issues as cops <laughs> cops lead the board cops police officers have the most domestic violence problems of any profession did you know that there are special advocacy groups that have been formed, built, to help women who are married to cops who get their asses kicked because it's hard to prosecute them because they special. That's the real problem. But we got all these women coming out hating. That's why I said it all the time. I was like, what did the NFL do to the women's group? They did something. You won't let us play? Well, fuck it. We'll bring down your whole organization, buddy. We're going to bring down your whole organization. No, don't get me wrong. There's some cool-ass women out there. They like football. And if they don't like it, they enjoy having time away from their nosy-ass husbands, pestering them, looking for their fucking socks. At least they know on Sunday they won't be asked a million and one questions. Honey, have you seen my... Honey, have you seen... At least they know during that time they can do some other shit. 
So those women who may not like football but like the fact their husband's out of the fucking way for a few hours, they are cool. I'm talking about the one. Fuck. Fucking game on again. They're hateful. And some of them are built like football players. Some of these women out here who own these in these feminist organizations. They built like linebackers. <laughs> you badly built bitch. Complain about football. Leave it alone. No, you can't play. You don't see us wanting to do, I don't know, fucking, um, I don't know, what the, what, what are some shit women do that we never do? Come on, guys. Make a little bit more money, I'm going to open the phone line up so we can have some call-ins and shit. <laughs> There's got to be something that women do. Lord have mercy, folks. Lord have mercy. Anyway, Ray Rice, he's back. He can play. Now, will he be able to play? I don't know because I don't know if any, any organizations have the balls to hire, him this, to hire him this year. I don't know. I mean, other than Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones don't give a fuck. <laughs> he Jerry Jones is a cold bastard. Jerry Jones hired um, Michael Sam, the gay player, first openly gay player drafted, just to cut his ass, just so he could get the print, the ink, for like two weeks, because he knew he was going to cut him because he wasn't good enough to play. I mean, it, it's just, man, you guys really need to pull back the curtain and on this whole world, man, and just look at shit for what it is. Women's organizations make money off of women, off pain and suffering of women, whether real or unreal, whether fiction or nonfiction. And that's just the reality of the situation. So the sooner you wake up and realize that they're not there to help you, doesn't it? You know what? Many of these, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it. Many of these organizations don't give a fuck about the people they say they care about because, and you know what, I'm not going to say it starts out that way. I won't say it starts out that way. And yes, I know I'm rambling on, you motherfuckers. I know that, but it's important that you get it. I'm not saying it starts off being, it can start off with a very genuine, sincere mission. But by the time you have to deal with all the shit you have to deal with, and once you realize you got to keep your doors open, and you realize it's hard to get donations, and all these things you start realizing once you go into a nonprofit space or even a corporate space, whatever, right? In a situation where money becomes a factor, a certain level of sincerity has to drop. It just does. A certain bit of uh, survival, sacrifice of your core values must change. You must recalibrate <laughs> your GPS about what the hell you'll do to stay afloat. And it's, it's ironic. I mean, most people just don't get it. They just, <laughs> the world is great. The world is great. No, it's not. It's fucked up. And you know what? Some of these organizations make it more fucked up. I'm Tim the Bartender, a.k.a. Tim Black. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Come on, Ray. You can play. Welcome back. Run the ball and make lots of dough. I know you can suck a hoe. I still believe it. I still believe it. Cause my eyes seen it. I see. Oh, we tease him a lot. But he still can play the spot. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I said we tease him a lot. But we got him on the spot. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hold your day. Pull your skirt down. Cause you got a nice round brown. Oh, you're leaving that, but we got them on the spot. 
Welcome back. Alright, I need some more coffee because I'm not pumped up enough yet. Stay tuned for the next segment. BAMS! Main events coming. Like 